Hello everyone and welcome back to Deersley. In this video I'm going to convert this um, old mainline uh, Great Western Guards van into a mess van for my railway crane. And I'm using for reference um, one of the photographs I found on Paul Bartlett's website. Very useful source of, um, of reference material. And I'm going to use this one. I'm not going to be too pedantic about getting every detail right on this because I think that the prototypes themselves were converted uh, by the uh, fitters in workshops um, uh, to, suit, to suit themselves, I suppose. They had their own design and they decided to convert them and fit them how they wanted. If I hold this um, van here, let me move it so you can see see both. Probably best like that. Probably best like that. Okay, the obvious part is the blanking in of this area here, but there is an access door here. So you know that blanking plate only comes a lot across so far. The actual sort of half door is already on the uh, tender. Uh, sorry, the brake van, and there is a step there up to it and a step up from this big rail that runs all the way along. Now on the photograph it has that step, but this rail has been cut short just behind that sort of um, hanger. No, behind that hanger there. So you can, you've can you got the two steps up and then there's an additional box of a sort of pale yellowish colour being put under this part which I'm going to have to model. Um, not sure what it's for, but I'm going to fit that in under here. And I'm going to need to make a window in here. So basically there's not a lot to do to convert this into that. I'm going to leave the handrails here, and I've seen other, um, other versions of the van where the handrails have been kept along here or, you know, just retained. Um, I see here they, they have been removed, but I might just leave those there. The first thing to do is to take this thing apart. So um, there's just a screw holds it, the chassis on under here. There's some there's some plastic um, lugs from the underside come through here, but I think I should be able to take this off, and I can remove and put aside the metal uh, weight. And the wheels themselves are a bit, a bit ropey, they're actually plastic ones, so I'm going to discard them and replace those with metal ones. So that's the chassis. And I have actually separated the floor. Uh, this floor was uh, glued in, presumably by the previous owner. This is a, a, a cheap second-hand um, uh, brake van I bought from eBay. And um, you may have noticed the couplings had already been cut off. Um, so, and this, this had been glued in. And when I prized it out with a, just running a knife around it, I thought it'd be easier to have it removed. Um, you can see where some painting has been done by the previous owner on that. Um, which we don't need to worry about because we're going to cover it all in. Okay, so that's it in its parts. The roof stays on. But if I wanted to, I could now saw through and remove those do that door. Uh, but I might just leave it there and, and build in around it, actually. I shall begin with the chassis and the floor modifications. Um, there's the brake or whatever it is there. I'm just simply going to remove that. Oh. Not that simple actually. Let's cut it off. It won't show but I don't need it so that can go. Now my Spratt and Winkle couplings, I might need to fit them both ends, I'm not sure yet. So this is a nice flat surface so what I shall need is a bit of plastic card in there to fill that up to, to make a nice flat surface here so that I can mount the, uh, the couplings. Okay, more interestingly, 
I'm going to remove this section of the lower rail just beyond the uh, step which is here and I'm going to remove it on both sides. So I'm going to cut through there. And there's a hanger there. I might see if I can leave the hanger, just cut that off. If not, I'll remove the hanger as well. Ah, it just pops off actually, so that was useful. And I'll see if it does there as well. Now, that's perfect. I just need to tidy that up. Right, so there, apart from any tidying up, is the, um, is the chassis modification done. I need to make some uh, alterations each end here in the normal way for my Spratt and Winkle couplings. But um, yeah, I'm pleased with that, that looks fine. Using one millimetre plastic card, I've started to cut some of the uh, panel filling in um, and I've also cut the window in this one. It's just a pressure fit in here, so I'll put some uh, cement in it later from behind to secure it in place. Now the end here is a, a trickier shape because it's, it's got a uh, curve for the roof. However, in the original guard van, because this was open, there's an end plate in here and that simply pulls out and I plan to turn it round, mark it and cut it um, and then push it forward to blank off this end of the uh, brake van. So I can use the actual uh, bit that came uh, with the brake van for this and it's got two windows in it. Now I know the one in the photograph has got one window in the middle but as I say there's a big variety of uh, different arrangements for windows in these things so I'm quite happy to have those two ready-made windows in my mess van. So I have marked it in fact with pencil and now I'll just uh, cut it across there and fit it in the end. I'm simply going to deeply score it and then I'm hoping uh, it'll snap. Give it another couple of cuts. Fingers crossed. Yeah, that's not too bad. There we go and I'll just clean that up and um, get that fitted. In the end, oh, it's not too bad. Okay, let's see if that. Let's see if that fits. The build part of this project is finished. Obviously, you'll need to fit your own uh, couplings. So you'll have to make uh, modifications according to the couplings you use. Also I've got ready the two mystery boxes uh, that go either side underneath the chassis. Um, I've put a little bit of detail on here, doors and things. Um, I'm not sure what they are, perhaps somebody can help on this, but my guess is they're for um, perhaps battery storage or um, uh, gas bottles, something to do with the uh, workings of the inside of the mess van perhaps. Anyway, I'm at a stage now 
where all I need to do is uh, paint it. So I'll airbrush this um, an overall grey colour. I'll take it apart to keep the, uh, the chassis part black. And um, I've shown you airbrushing uh, before, so I'll get this little bit done and come back to you. Well, I mixed uh, a sort of a nice dark engineering uh, railway grey kind of colour, uh, just with some flat black and flat white. And I've airbrushed this on, and it's it's uh, dry enough to handle and everything. And um, I've bought back the handrails which were um, raised obviously on the uh, original um, guards van and they were painted white. It's um, easy to remove so all you need is some uh, cotton buds and some methylated spirit and some tissue. I simply dip the cotton bud into the methylated spirit so that it's sort of soaked uh, but you can't use it like that because the uh, methylated spirits would flow all over the uh, body of the wagon so I'm just going to squeeze that off into tissue so now my uh, cotton bud is just dampened with the methylated spirit and then holding it sort of flat and being careful not to touch any of the other raised parts and carefully just going to wipe off the um, the dark grey paint. Now as you pick up paint it's going to make the q-tip dirty so when it starts not to look so white soak the q-tip again and just dry it on a paper towel and then we can carry on as before. Just twist it round every now and again to get a, a fresh clean bit of the cotton bud. Now there's a, a handle across the door there. Now a my uh, cotton bud started to fray a little too much so I'm just going to change to a fresh cotton bud. Same procedure and just carefully just remove the, uh, the grey paint. I'll finish the handrail um, there's also a couple of other things that need uh, painting white, which is like the brackets for lamps, etc. I can't remember, to be honest, whether they were white under there, but they're a bit fiddly to get in around there, so I'm going to uh, just paint those with white paint. This is the chassis with the body removed, and you can see I've fitted a, a heavier weight um, on the inside of the uh, mess van. It won't be seen, so it was easy to fit there. It's a slightly heavier weight just to give it a little bit more um, traction when I pull the crane. And um, I've painted and attached the, the yellowish boxes. They look a bit bright, but it's got to be weathered yet. So again, I'll leave this weathering to make sure everything is, everything is sort of as dry as it can be. Except for cutting and fitting the windows, the mess van body is pretty much complete. I used my computer to print a couple of the more obvious uh, lettering on here, particularly CCED, and I've raided my, um, my spare transfers uh, for some, a couple of the other finishing details. I'll make the windows from clear polystyrene. Uh, cut to push fit and then using some uh, white PVA glue I'll fit them in. Um, the PVA glue will dry transparent so that should look fine. All it then remains to do is to fit the body to the chassis and then I can do the weathering. Well now the mess van is practically there. I fitted the um, 
windows and uh, I, as I said I've used um, the clear polystyrene uh, except for these windows here these were quite fiddly and what I've used is a product called micro crystal clear and it's super for doing um, filling in windows in small openings and these were a little bit uh, fiddly and you just dip a cocktail stick in and the viscosity is such that it'll span that and you'll have like a white window but as it dries it comes out pretty clear which is uh, which is a great help so that stage is done I've reassembled the whole thing the couplings are on I've toned down these boxes under here a little bit um, that's just some black humbro paint uh, painted on it and then just wiped off it's toned it down and left a sort of staining this will be dry tomorrow and then I'll be able to finish with the weathering so now I'm going to lightly weather uh, this mess van I've mixed some Tamiya flat earth with a small amount of flat black and I've thinned it down because the the van itself is um, a dark grey colour so I'm mainly trying to just add a little bit of uh, track grime to this and I also want to further tone down the yellow of the box and to hide some of the detail on one or two of the decals because they're not strictly the right decals for this vehicle but with some weathering on it that'll be perfectly fine. Now it doesn't matter if I get some of the weathering over the windows because um, all the sides get uh, grimy and if you want them cleaner just take a cotton bud and gently wipe them so they look as though they've been cleaned. But I shan't bother. I'll concentrate this weathering down around the frames and across that, that box. This is part of my Dapple railway crane build that I did about 12 months ago. This part four with the uh, accompanying mess van now finishes this build. Before I finish this video and show you some stills of the uh, complete Dapple crane with the jib runner and the uh, mess van, I'd like to clear up a couple of emissions uh, from earlier videos. First one from early on, I uh, said I would give you a link to the uh, plans for the dapple crane itself. Um, I completely forgot. Uh, I was reminded recently that I hadn't put it on. So at the end I will put my link to the uh, dimensions and the plans or working drawings I used for the crane. Secondly, throughout this build I have been using reference photographs uh, from Mr. Paul Bartlett. I decided on this build that I would contact him and seek his permission to use his photographs on my videos. I'm very happy to say that Paul kindly replied and granted me permission. And so in thanks to him um, I would like to post a link as well to his website. Um, so I'll do that as well at the end of this video. So anyway on with the stills. I hope you've enjoyed this build. Uh, this is the final of four parts. Thanks for watching and please feel free to subscribe and comment. Mm -hmm.